Hello guys, this is Jack coming back to you again with a uh, Mac OS uh, install on my ThinkPad X220. Now, what I'm doing here is downloading the Mac OS Mojave patcher tool. What this does is allow you to run Mac OS Mojave on older Macs. And since our X220s are now in the realm of the older Macs, um, it does mean that it patches um, whatever stops it from running on Apple devices um, so this patcher is actually meant as I said for running the Mac OS Mojave and older now non supported Apple MacBook Pros, Apple iMacs etc and since our hardware on the XC20 is very similar uh, it allows it to run on ours. The other great thing about it is it does allow us to actually download the Mac OS Mojave um, which we can't do from the App Store because it says our hardware is unsupported um, and it does download it from Apple servers and then patch it directly and then allow it to be um, put onto a USB so it cuts out all the steps um, that sort of are difficult on, on making a USB stick apart from actually copying the EFIs and KECs and everything over. Now where I get my EFIs and KECs from is from a site called x220 mcdonaldtech.com which you'll see me actually doing later on. Um, this is me sort of uh, down at running the macOS uh, patcher and starting off the download. Uh, which you'll see in a minute and as I said it does download it from Apple servers and create a USB stick for us um, which then we have to patch with the Clover bootloader and EFIs um, which we get from mcdonaldtech.com which is again uh, sorry x220 mcdonaldtech.com uh, which is a great resource um, I've used this uh, extensively since I've had my XC20 and my T420 um, to actually install Mac OS onto my machines. Now currently this is running on the X220 that I use for testing that doesn't have a Wi-Fi card in it. Um, I have found the Ethernet to be a little bit flaky um, on the Mojave install. Um, I don't know whether that's to do with the machine itself um, but I'm sure it will run fine on the wireless card that I've got in there. This is mcdonaldtech.com sorry x220 mcdonaldtech.com um, which is the best resource um, for getting everything you need and you still do need to follow all the instructions from this um, once we've actually made our USB stick um, so you do have to follow the instructions on copying the EFI and what I'm doing is downloading the ThinkPad, Kex and EFI Clover pack from this site um, so that we can put it on the USB stick after the USB stick has been made. Um, so yeah, you still do, do need this as a resource. Uh, great resource that it is, thank you very much. So this is the Kex pack downloaded. So next I believe I'll be uh, actually formatting the USB stick. Right so I actually always use a Windows machine and this part to completely clean the USB stick before I start this so that I actually uh, if you don't get the bit that says um, partition type then you know your USB isn't clean um, it will still have the EFI on there from last time so what I do is use this part on Windows uh, clean the disk and actually that makes sure that I haven't got any existing USB part uh, sorry EFI partitions from older um, sort of older installs etc on there so this this has now created the stick ready for us to use with the Mojave patcher to actually um, install 
the Mac OS Mojave. This is me playing around with the screen recorder function, function in Mojave which uh, I find to be quite a great resource and uh, this whole video was done with it so um, yeah it's working great. Now I am using an external microphone uh, with iMovie which I um, downloaded from the App Store with this version of Mojave um, so yeah it's absolutely great. So as you can see Mojave is finished downloading and we're going to go, go to the part of creating the USB stick now. Um, what you'll find is because I erased the USB stick after running the patcher um, the USB stick isn't going to show as being there for me to create create the actual patched image. So I do have to come out of the patcher and restart it again. What you'll find is everywhere where it's asking me to put in my username and password, I've cut those options out, um, just for my own security, etc. Um, I don't like having my username and the username actually uh, put on there because it is my full name. Right, so this is now creating the USB stick. Um, it does take about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, however, you'll see that uh, I'm doing this a lot faster. Right, the next thing to do once it's finished creating the USB stick is to mess around with Clover Configurator um, and copy the EFI folder onto the USB stick from the McDonald Tech uh, Kex and Utilities pack. So first we have to mount the EFI. USB stick, sorry. So this did seem to take a little while. So then we open the partition. Copy the FI from the McDonald Tech folder to the EFI partition on the USB stick. And I also like to copy the actual full McDonald Tech folder onto the USB stick, um, but onto the main part, not onto the EFI partition. So you'll see that I will do that in a second. So I'll go to downloads. copy the whole McDonald Tech um, Kex partition to the USB stick. And that's it, you're you're ready to boot from that. Now one extra step that you do have to do on this and it's very important is once you boot from that USB stick and install Mac OS um, you'll get to the point of actually installing the Mac OS onto the hard drive etc and when it reboots um, 
you would usually want to use the USB installer to boot from the Mac OS hard drive. Now the first time you do this um, it's not going to work. What you're going to have to do is reboot from the USB stick um, and you'll find a post install option on the USB stick post install patch um, which you will have to run okay um, so once you've run the post install patch it will then allow you to do everything else on the McDonald Tech website the way that it's done so basically after you've um, rebooted with your USB stick run the post install patch um, from the USB stick onto the hard drive um, then restart it then basically you still have the USB in boot from the USB into Clover but then go into boot Mac OS um, from hard drive and then you go into your Clover configurator as it says in McDonald Tech copy your EFI from your USB partition onto the EFI on the hard drive and you're ready to go um, then you just have to absolutely follow every direction on the McDonald Tech website I'm sorry that I'm not going through absolutely everything but um, you know I haven't got a video camera and this is not gonna actually sort of help you because I can't go any further from here without a video camera etc um, to actually go for it so steps again make the USB stick copy the EFI um, then basically install the first go into the installer install install windows reboot from the USB stick only run post install um, make sure you, you choose Mac OS uh, sorry the machine type as 8.1 or 8.1 which is um, RX 220s T420s anything with the older um, second generation i5 i3 i7 um, and yes that that will absolutely work um, and it is working as I can show you here it's actually working on this machine um, which you'll see the specs of in a minute just to just to actually show you what it is um, sorry as I said that I can't actually show you the rest of the process um, but McDonald Tech lays it out completely so you know as long as you follow the steps from McDonald Tech the only extra step that you're doing is after you've installed the first part you reboot from the USB stick and run the post install on the USB stick and select it as a machine type 8.1 um, yeah and that's it um, and basically choose the the the, the, the patches um, which are basically um, you know actually great so here's my machine specs as you can see um, yeah it's second generation i5 2.6 um, you can see the machine type there is 8 comma 1 and yeah it's all working f absolutely fine so anyway guys um, if you do have any questions I will try to help um, but hopefully you know I, I am a working guy so not on on the net every single day so please be patient um, I will try to help other than that, if you do look at the actual uh, Mac OS Mojave patcher video on YouTube, that tells you how to, how to patch the actual um, post install, which is exactly what I've done. I've done exactly the same as it's said on that, and it has made it work. So, yep. Yeah. Um, good luck, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, sorry that I've been rambling a long time um, it's a lot longer than I thought it would be and yeah 